that bar. And that extra gear, that first three steps. Huge strides in the performance. That I might not be the player I am today. All right, welcome to another episode of Behind the Gear. And today we are sitting with the Suzuki twins, all well, Suzuki brothers. We got Ryan and Nick here. And um, obviously I had a chance to get to know you guys a little while ago. And um, you guys are just okay at ice hockey, like not too, too bad. Um, but uh, as you guys are kind of getting through and kind of watching you guys play, there's a lot of similarities between the two of you, which is really cool. And obviously a lot of differences, which is which is what makes you guys, obviously you guys both unique. But the one thing that stands out, I think when you talk about either of you guys, Ryan or Nick is uh, hockey IQ and kind of being smart with hockey. And I know your parents, your parents are great, but your parents were not really big hockey people. They were not. No. <laughs> <laughs> they were not. Uh, so how did you guys like, you know, as far as picking up the game, obviously you guys are athletic, you know, athletic young guys, but, uh, when did you guys start playing? Like when kind of what age did you guys start? Well, uh, probably for me, I think I was four or five just playing tight hockey in Lambeth. Yeah. Um, I actually played for the Canadian team or Canadians, uh, nice. for the Lambeth. So, Oh, a little uh, iron either. Right? Yeah. Little, yeah, yeah. So, um, that's when I first started playing, but um, my dad was taking us to the rink just to practice skating before that. So yeah, yeah, I think I was about two, just walking around on the ice, and Nick was flying around on his skates. And <laughs> yeah. I couldn't do too much, but um, my dad just kind of pushed me out there, and I started walking around, and I picked it up pretty quickly, and yeah, uh, I just never looked back. And I think I started playing tyke at around like five or five same or kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you guys were both out in Lambeth to start out then, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And was your, like, did, did your dad kind of get you guys into it or just because you lived in Canada, you're just like, hey, well, might as well start playing hockey. Uh, I think it was mostly our, our dad, but also just living in Canada. Our, our friends just started to play hockey yeah. too. So um, we both played soccer in Lambeth too. And then um, I, th I think most of the teammates from the soccer team also played hockey. Right, so, so I it think kind it of made pretty, sense, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, and our, our dad was like a big guy and like, get us in as many sports as we could and just kind of round out as an athlete. And yeah. Um, just like if we didn't like something, we wouldn't do it again. And yeah, uh, if we liked it, we'd keep doing it. So I think uh, we just both like talking. No, it's cool. It. It's funny. My, I got a young daughter, obviously and a young son and uh, my wife and I are kind of the same thing. Like they're, they've done gymnastics. They, they like that. They're doing soccer. They're starting a little bit of hockey this year, but same thing and basketball, like trying to get them into other stuff just to see what they like and what they kind of stick to. What were some of the sports that you guys had a chance to play when you guys were younger? Um, I played soccer, lacrosse, volleyball at school, and um, hockey, obviously. And, yeah. Um, I think a little bit of basketball. I tried out for the team, didn't make it. But, um, <laughs> yeah, my grandpa was, wasn't too happy about that. He was a big basketball guy. <laughs> was he? Yeah. Yeah, our grandpa played uh, Team Ontario basketball. So oh, no way. He's, cool. He's a pretty good uh, basketball player around London. So Yeah. But uh, for me, I just played – hockey, soccer, and then every school sport that I could possibly get yeah. to. And then um, my dad tried to get me to do karate, but uh, I showed <laughs> up and did not like it. So um, that would ended pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nick's a test dummy. So once he goes through it, I don't have to do that. So. Yeah, you're lucky, right? Yeah, exactly. Nick didn't like karate, so you don't even have to try it. It's perfect. <laughs> it's great. Uh, and then for both you guys, when you guys got to the age of like that odd of age or whatever, when you can kind of start playing double A AA or triple A more competitive, did both you guys jump right into triple A right off the bat or did, did, did one of you guys hang back a little bit? No, we, uh, we both, both started. Yeah. We both played triple A for all seven years with the junior nights. So yeah. Eh? yeah. Well, so it was, it was pretty good then. Yeah. My dad thought I was going to get cut the one year, but uh, he <laughs> then he the paid team. the coach. He made the team. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but both you guys have, you know, obviously good teams. We were just talking to, to Rackliff Liberal with the 99 age group and then the 01 age group with you, Ryan. Uh, both obviously, you know, good teams and, and a bunch of good players. Uh, when you guys come back now, you guys have both moved away. You're playing in the O and, and now it's starting a professional career. When you guys come back to London, do you guys still hang a lot with that same kind of group of kids? Like that same group of kids you had when you were younger that are now all kind of teenagers? Or is that kind of the same crew that you kind of hang with, Ryan? Yeah, like... Um, just all the guys from that team, we were super close. And I think when I think about like a hockey team, like that's the first like image in my mind, like that team. And we were just like all so close. And um, yeah, like every time I come back, I just can't wait to hang out with those guys. That's so cool. yeah, we stay connected pretty well. Yeah. And what were you with, the, with kind of the, that 99 age group? Yeah, I guess I've been playing with Isaac for all that time and I still can't get away from him. We just <laughs> work out together. Now together. in his defense, I mean, he did play in Guelph and then you yeah, got traded I, there. You I demanded there. a trade to Guelph. Yeah. Uh, maybe. 
uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, just Husey here too, and then uh, well, a bunch of guys are yeah. at TPH, Turco, yeah. Willits, Martin, so. Yeah. A bunch of guys just are around here and uh, it's good to see them coming back every summer. Yeah, I know. It's cool for sure. And what do you guys do? Like when you guys come back in the summer, obviously the season's long. You had a long run this year, which we'll get into a little bit. Um, you had no run this year, which we'll get into. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but, you know, as like when you guys do come back in the summer, what's it like to, you know, do you guys, what do you guys do to get away from the rank and kind of turn your mind off hockey a little bit? Is there stuff that you guys like to do golf or hang out at the beach or anything like that? You guys like to kind of. Yeah, <laughs> we went. We uh, went golfing at the OHL alumni tournament, which was pretty fun. Um, a lot of older OHL players and uh, managers and coaches. So it was kind of cool to get away from uh, hockey and just have a nice day of golf. But yeah, um, I'm not too good at golf, but <laughs> yeah, it's not great. <laughs> I don't think Ryan's much better. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've, since I've been back, I've just been hanging out at home, trying to just rest up. So yeah. I don't really do too much just uh moss at home i guess yeah well i've been home for a while so <laughs> yeah you've had a long out. rest yeah i mean um like i got a bunch of buddies and we just try and like mix it up like the other week we went paintballing cool uh we've gone to the beach um yeah like we just kind of like mix it up we went to the trampoline park one day <laughs> nice. yeah, that's cool legs weren't feeling too good after no. that no. That's a workout though, right? Like you don't yeah, think it about is. it. You just like, yeah, we'll bounce around a bit. And it's a, it's a bad man. You pay for two hours and after 20 minutes, you're dead. You don't, <laughs> yeah, you don't know what to do. Get our money back. Yeah. Uh, did you have to buy socks or did you already yeah, have you your own tramp? Yeah, socks. did you have, you already have your own trampoline socks in your pocket or no? <laughs> you have to buy <laughs> trampoline yeah, socks. Yeah, you have to buy them. They're sick. They got like grips on them and they only cost like 30 bucks. <laughs> they're pretty sweet. They got they like pretty nice good. neon colors on yeah. the side. Yeah. it's true though no you gotta you gotta buy trampoline wear them with some nice jeans and it's an outfit <laughs> yeah exactly you don't need shoes it's perfect and you can bounce around a bit it's yeah. great it's great you got good grip yeah uh so going through you know obviously minor hockey and stuff like that you guys get to you know that that draft year um and i obviously both of you guys go you know go high what was it like for you nick going through it first as far as just that's kind of the first milestone for a lot of the young minor hockey players right and going up to that point you're playing on a good team Maybe a couple, you know, like you said, there was maybe a year or two where you thought, man, maybe I'm on the bubble, you know, when you're younger. And then by the end, you're established as, you know, one of the top guys on that team. Um, going through the draft and stuff, what was that process like being, you know, being kind of a bit of a higher rated guy and, you know, were, were you nervous at all about it? Do you kind of have an idea where you were going to go or was it pretty laid out for you? How was that? Yeah, I thought it was uh, pretty nerve wracking throughout the whole year. Uh, you want to play every game like it's your best game. So, uh you kind of catch yourself looking in the stand to see who's watching you, look for your jackets and whatever. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, I think I just try to push that out as much as I could. And um, I knew I was a pretty good player. And uh, at, right after the season, the more OHL team started talking to you and you kind of got a feel of um, where you could be ending up uh, from agents or uh, the scouts that you're talking to. But um when uh, Owen Sound invited me to go watch a playoff game there, uh, I had a really good feeling going into uh, that meeting with uh, Dale DeGray and uh, throughout their whole organization. I felt uh, comfortable with them, and uh, they had two picks in the first round. So uh, it could have been um, it could have been them, and or I could have went later, but uh, I was lucky enough to be picked by Owen Sound. Oh, it's cool and good spot. You, you've obviously enjoyed it there. You've been there. I mean, this year you went to Guelph halfway through the year, but. Uh, you've spent a couple of good years there and how, like, it's a small town, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, everybody that I talk to thinks it's, uh, not a very good place to play, but, uh, I loved my three and a half years there. Um, just the guys on the team, all the coaches that I had in the community just, uh, are all together and, uh, just one big family. So, um, most of the guys I talked to on Guelph hated, uh, coming to Owen Sound. So, yeah. um, I think that could be just the teams we had and just the hard work that, uh, Owen, Owen Sound puts in and the whole organization gives you every opportunity. So um, Owen Sound's definitely an underrated spot to play. I, I think a lot of guys didn't like playing there because like maybe you guys play in a bit of a shoebox. <laughs> yeah, the, the rink's pretty small, but uh, it's a tiny one, yeah. you get used to it. And, uh, For you guys being there, there yeah. practicing all the time, you love it probably. And yeah, the teams everyone coming loves in, it. Like, yeah. Oh man, this is, yeah. you get smushed today. Yeah. And you know, for Art you, boards. yeah, for yeah. you coming in as a, like on another team, what was the vibe from players on your team being like, "We're going to Owen Sound." First of all, the dry socks. Yeah, town the small. Mindsets. <laughs> it's like get before the game starts, you're, you're losing. So, <laughs> um, no, but like especially that 
like my first year when they had that good team, um, it was tough just going in there and yeah. having all these big guys can come yeah. just wear you out on the tough boards, big bounces off the boards. Like they know how to play it. They'd have all these trick plays like icings and yeah. it'd bounce right out, right in the slot for right. like a one T and yeah. It's just yeah. it's hard to play, yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely different than any other rink. No, definitely. Um, and then for you, right now, you you know, two years later, now now it's your turn to go through it. Were you a little bit more prepared for that season? Because I know that that minor midget season, like you said, there's trench coats in the stands, there's clipboards. You're it's hard not to see that you know every single game, pretty much, right? Especially when you're on good teams, there's a lot of scouts <laughs> that are watching guys. So for you, you kind of saw it a little bit with your brother going through it. Were you a little bit more prepared? Do you think that's when you went through your draft year to the OHL? Yeah, for sure. I think. Nick didn't really know what to expect, like going in and um, just kind of had to like take it all in. And me, for me, like I already kind of had an idea of what it's all like. And um, just like having him go through it, all the process and everything has made it a little bit easier for me. But like the pressure is still there to perform and uh, go every night. And um, like I said, like it's a it's a pretty pressured season, like with the OHL Cup and everything, all those big tournaments. And yeah, obviously, like the big scouts in the stands and the interviews with teams and. Yeah. It's pretty nerve wracking for a 15 year old, right? No, so, definitely. Yeah. Um, I think uh, just like for me, I just had to take it all in and just like me and Nick, like we both know we were good players and uh, we were going to get seen. So um, I think we just had to play every game like like it was the most important one. So yeah. yeah. No, it's good. And uh, before we get into kind of where you got drafted and stuff, but um, when you guys are going through that process, obviously, even as a young kid, you know, you said we're young, you're 15, which I 100% agree with. Mentally, what's it like going through that as far as just, let's say you go on a four game slide and you know, you, you know, you're one of the better players on the team, same with you, Nick, and all of a sudden you're on a four game skid and you can't score. And it's like, you know, how do you get out of that stuff? So I'll go, I'll go for you, Nick, older brother. You can give a little bit of advice to those young kids out there. But you know, if, if you are slump, but even now, if you're going through a bit of a slump, are you just kind of like, Hey, I just got to think about nothing. Just get back to working hard. Or do you have something that you go to maybe a quote that you go to or a, a book or something like that? that you like to you know kind of check up and kind of get refocused on? Yeah, I didn't. I know I went through a couple uh, goal scoring droughts in minor midget, and um, you. As I got older, it got more. Uh, I think I got more easier on myself. Um, but back then, it was more. Uh, I think I was trying to do too much, and uh, I just needed to get back to being simple, um, just playing well in the D zone, and then translating that to offense. We I played on a really good line, and I had great two two great players to play with. So uh, just getting the chance to get, get them the puck and I knew I could get it back from them. So, um, but now into like the OHL, it's, uh, you, in my, maybe in minor hockey, you, you knew you could get a point at least, but, uh, OHL is a lot harder. Um, yeah. uh, but I went through a couple of pointless droughts in my career throughout the OHL and, uh, it's a tough time cause you don't want to be dropped down the lineup or, uh, if, if it's your NHL draft year, you don't want to be sliding down the ranking. Sure. So, um, I think for me, it was just keeping everything more simple when that was happening. Um, try, try not to do too much with the puck, uh, try not to be too fancy. So, uh, that was the biggest thing for me. Yeah. Cool. What about you, right? Like when you've gone through it and, and, you know, obviously minor midget now in the OHL, you know, is there anything that you kind of go to? Is there like a, you know, do you kind of think about it a lot? Do you kind of just try to put, kind of shut your mind off or is there some sick pump up song that you listen to to get you going? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like this year for me. Um, like we had a tough year and, um, wasn't like a lot of the time I was pretty stressed out. Like it's my draft year and uh, our team wasn't winning too well. And, um, I think you just gotta like kind of put aside like all like the bad things. And I mean, um, like just keep it simple. Like you said, and, um, like it's hard to come out every game and play the exact same. So you just gotta kind of find a balance and, uh, just come up prepared every night and, um, whether it's just changing little things up, like taping your stick different, like sure, trying yeah. to change the mindset. Yeah. Um, maybe something like that, or um, maybe change the height of your stick if you feel like you're losing the puck too much, or yeah, stuff like little things like that, I think can build up to the bigger picture. And, it's a good point, though, because sometimes you make that little tweak, you go from white tape to black tape. Yeah. Sounds ridiculous, but you for any non hockey <laughs> player, you're like, why? <laughs> who cares? Right? You wear white socks, black socks, doesn't matter. But for hockey guys, you change the color of your tape. It's it's different, man. You look down that shaft and it's like that blade yeah. looks so different, right? So even that or cutting your stick down a little bit, oh, I feel like my hands are a little bit better, yeah. a little more confident, right? Or lengthen a little Just bit. Oh, little things that make you more confident in your game yeah. like helps a whole lot. 
daily, oh, daily sure. routines. Yeah. Are you guys pretty superstitious? Like before games and stuff, do you guys have yeah, routines? Or, I, you are, yeah. yeah. You're not Ryan. No. I have like, <laughs> I take my stick, but sometimes I don't even take my stick. So. <laughs> like I just, I'm pretty relaxed about that stuff, but I always put like, I always come at the rink at like pretty much the same time and with a coffee. So yeah, that's all. I that's do. it. That's all yeah. you got. That's all right. What do you, you have a pretty like elaborate routine or a couple things you really focus on? Uh, I'd say it's pretty elaborate. Uh, try to, yeah, try, try to show up at the rink every time at the same time. Um, are like, are you, are you guys sitting like, are you guys like sitting in the parking lot waiting for it to hit? Like, no, <laughs> no, okay. no, okay. Not that bad. Well, okay, I good. live with Raddy and he's pretty slow. So <laughs> I'd, I'd be waiting for him to. Yeah. Yeah. But you live with me too. Yeah. And Same guy. Yeah. You're <laughs> totally right. Yeah. <laughs> That's basically uh, another yeah, rock clip. Go to, there. go to Tim's, get an ice cap before the game. And then, uh, yeah, I basically stretch and roll out at the same time, do the same stuff on the bike. Uh, basically doing everything I feel like I need to get my body prepared to play. So um, I think just feeling good before the game is my the biggest thing for me. And uh, the routine I've been doing throughout the whole HL has uh, seemed oh, to work. So cool. That's good. Yeah. Are you guys right skate first or left skate first, guys? Left. Left? I put on my... I put on my left first and then tie my right first. Okay. So you always put left on, then right, and then tie right first, then left. Yeah. What about you? I put my left on and tie my left one. And then do you even No, put... like I put left, then right, then tie my left one. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Not a weirdo. Just tie one skate. <laughs> yeah, just the other, the other one, one I don't tie. A weird that thing that like I do it. is I don't put my pants on before my, like I, I don't know, in practice I uh, do shinners and socks and pants, but in yeah. The game days I do shinner socks, skates, and then I put my pants on over my skates for some reason. I, I always really did that why. though. I found a way more comfortable doing my skates over my yeah, pants. Yeah, but on. I only do it for game days. Oh, do you? So practice, you don't do that at all? No. <laughs> I wear the girdle so you oh, yeah. they don't feel like anything. Yeah. That's not bad, actually. Yeah. We're getting, we're getting in the weeds yeah, here I don't on the like hockey. The girdle. No? No. The girdle's not bad though. Girdle's kind of like spandexy, which is. Well, there's no protection. Good. Like if I get hit. Yeah, I'm you're pretty much done. You're pretty much out on the air. Maybe you should go to a pant. Probably. No. <laughs> Just stay out. You, you like else. dodging shots instead of blocking them, right? I, li I enjoy the pain. Yeah, you're like the Matrix out there. Just dodge, <laughs> you just dodge them. Yeah, try I to, don't block the no, shots. You got to get it out of the way. Coach, I really tried to get in front of that one. Why'd you move your half side? I don't yeah. know. I have no idea. Trying to read the, where the puck's going. Yeah, it's exactly. Um, but for you, right, you know, get, obviously go through your draft year. You're pretty, you know, highly touted. I don't know how or why, but anyways, you're pretty highly touted. No, but you end up going first overall, man, which is, un, you know, unbelievable. And uh, for those who don't know, like usually the top couple of picks kind of get set up a little bit, right? Where, you know, you kind of maybe had an idea what was going on. So leading up to the draft, let's say the day before, a couple of days before, did you kind of know what was going on or was it a bit of a, was it, was it up in the air until the draft for you? Well, at the start of the year, my dad told me I might need a year of junior B before I go to the O. <laughs> And, and did uh, you say, yeah, okay, now I'm going to prove you wrong? Yeah, and I took that as motivation. So, because uh, I was kind of like a slimmer guy and yeah. it's about a buck 50 at the start of the year. <laughs> Were you actually like kind of pissed when your dad told you that? You're just like, yeah, I, like, I like, want to play in the O like my brother. Like, Yeah, like Nick was playing and yeah. I was like, if he can play, I, I'm going to play. Yeah, I was like, nope, you're well, a little smaller and you're probably not going to. He told, Nick was he told me I had, I had to get a, a full school package or I wasn't playing in the <laughs> OHL. <laughs> did he? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and um, I think, like, since, like, uh, I had a great coach, like, we had the same coach, Steve Benedetti, and mm -hmm. uh, him and Greg were our coaches, and uh, Steve was just, every practice, he'd tell me, like, how high can you go, and, um, like, there was thought, like, maybe I go to Owen Sound and, like, kind of uh, just, like, only say I'm going to Owen Sound to go play with Nick, but um, I think, for me, like, I just wanted to go as high as I could and just kind of see how high I could go. And like Steve was always telling me, and um, I think halfway through the season, I was starting getting ranked like in the top tens and stuff like that. And, um, and then after that, uh, like Jack Hughes kind of committed to uh, the program. And Oh, that's I, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I yeah. visited with uh, Barry a couple of times and I went down to go watch one of their games and I felt like my beating went really well and um, they really liked me as a kid and um, got a call about, three days before the draft um, from Dave Gagne. And uh, he said that uh, he's like, how do you feel about going to Barry? And it took me like a couple seconds to realize they had the first pick. And 
uh, I was, I was pretty excited. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome, man. Um, and as, as kind of his older brother, were you kind of like, uh, kind of pissed or were you like, man, that's awesome. Like good for him. <laughs> no, I wasn't pissed. <laughs> uh, we were in the playoffs and, uh, I remember we were driving to the Sioux. So it was a long, uh, bus yeah, ride. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I got a call from Ryan and he, I don't know, he doesn't really call me usually. So I was like wondering what it was. And then he told me that he was going first. So that's cool. Um, I kind of got all excited and told all, all my teammates and they were all excited for him. So you basically broke the news before. Anybody yeah. Knew. Yeah. <laughs> I knew I was, I was you broke the insider. draft. You broke the draft. Oh, which I was oh, picked up on his phone call. <laughs> Oh, that's great, man. That's, yeah, that's really cool. And obviously, you know, you guys are, you know, obviously brothers, but competitive, both, you know, elite athletes and stuff like that. What was it like growing up for you guys? Was it always, you know, you trying to nip at his heels or trying to beat him at stuff. And then when he did beat you at something, you kind of lose, like, was it, how was it always competitive with well, you guys? I have, or? I have like three scars on my forehead <laughs> and my eyes and he's got a couple on his face too. So just from, just from yeah. brother, br brotherly yeah. love, we'll call it. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah it was always competitive. Yeah. Everything was got competitive somehow. For sure. Like ping pong, I'd throw my paddle at him if he beat me or something. <laughs> was there any was there ever any like good tilts, like good fists throwing at all? I think Nick would let me get a couple shots before he ended it, but never really Nothing too bad. No. No. My and, mom would get mad. Yeah, I was gonna that, that that was kind of my next question. Like who is who is the one who'd lose? Like would your dad be coming running in, like, you guys stop doing this? No, or was it your he mom? liked it sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. He's alright with it. Yeah. So mom was, yeah. mom was the enforcer, right? She, yeah. yeah. Just to make sure Ryan was okay. Yeah. Always protect. I see. I have a younger brother too. Always protecting younger <laughs> brother. My younger, my, my younger brother was like, just like you, like us, like, or like you guys, like, we fought a lot and you, as an older brother, like no way he could ever beat you. Right. No, no. So, and I remember like, I wouldn't even touch him sometimes. And he'd be on the floor yelling, dad, dad, he's hitting me. And I'm like, and I'm standing like, I'm not even, my dad would come down because we fought all the time. Yeah. And he'd lose it on me. I'm like, dad, I swear I didn't even touch him. He's just sitting there yelling. And then my dad started to catch on. But as a younger <laughs> brother, he can get me going in a second. And then as yeah. soon as I'd snap, he'd start screaming or yelling if I was really in one. And then, yeah, I'd, I'd well, end up getting in trouble. We find any way to piss, piss the other older guy off. For sure. Yeah. Over now that you guys are older, though, like, do you guys find yourselves hanging out a little bit? Like going wherever to the mall or going, you know, kind of yeah. doing stuff together a little bit now? Yeah, we went yeah. shopping the other day. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Did uh, Nick buy anything for you with his oh. signing bonus or? Oh. Really, eh? Hmm. He's not generous. No. What do you mean? Didn't even buy me a birthday present. Oh, Nick. Seriously? This guy hasn't got me anything from a birthday <laughs> in life. So Yeah, but he's just a poor, he's just a poor OHL guy. No, gets he's like not anymore. 70. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just got to pay my gas. I paid for the whole Father's Day gift. And, wow. And Mother's Day gift. And I haven't seen a dollar, so... Well, th th that could change. He might get drafted this year. I so hope he so. Might, yeah. yeah. You, got, you got a running I'm tab. You got, you got, you got an yeah. Excel sheet at home. Yeah. You're just like waiting to throw to him. Say, yeah, buddy. I'm just going to ask, ask mom for 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to you. Yeah. Now, uh, now, now kind of going through the OHL, obviously, you know, for both you guys, I have an opportunity to play. And, and you know, what, what were the biggest differences that you guys noticed from going from minor hockey to making that jump into the OHL? Like, right, I'll start with you. Was there any kind of big you know, skill set wise, really mentally or physically things that you're like, whoa, this is a bit of an adjustment. And, you know, I got to make sure I work on this and this in order to be able to be successful at this level. Yeah. I think just like the physicality of it and like minor hockey, you can, like I was able to hold guys off the puck and uh, just protect the puck way better than I, what I did in my first year. And I think just having like those big 20 year olds and 19 year olds on you, it's, you gotta, you gotta put in more work. Like, your legs, like you got to be strong in your legs and um, just kind of protect the puck and keep it away from those big guys. Like it's, it's pretty tough as a, as a young guy. And um, that's something I've been working on. And um, I think, yeah, that was the biggest thing. And then the other thing was just the speed. Like the yeah. first couple of games, you're kind of like, like, how am I going to keep up with these guys? And then you kind of get into it more and your practices are higher pace. And um, you just, I think you just get better throughout that. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And anything for you, Nick, this kind of stands out when you first started playing, you're like, man, this is a jump for sure, obviously, but yeah. is there anything that kind of stands out for you? Yeah. At 16, I think a lot of it's mental, um, moving away for the first time, probably, uh, it's, a uh, it's tough to get used to a new family and new teammates. And, uh, but a lot of the younger guys, uh, stick together and, uh, you really get a good bond. And then all, all of the older guys took a, all of us in and, uh, we had a really um, close team throughout my whole uh, OHL career. So um, 
mentally it's tough uh, if you're not used to not putting up a lot of points. Um, like he had a ton of, uh, he had more points than me in his first year, but yeah. uh, we both had a lot of points in minor hockey, but uh, coming into OHL, you, you can go a few games without uh, having power play or points and uh, it's tough on a 16 year old, but um, if you can get through that mentally with good coaching and uh, your teammates helping me out, helping you out, uh, it's pretty easy to go uh, and have that success. And that's a great point. Years. Yeah. And I think, I think that's something that sometimes not overlooked, but not talked about a lot, I guess is, you know, at 16, you're moving away and I'm sure I, you know, tell me what you guys went through, but when you guys, let's say your first couple weeks away, living with that billets, school starting here, all your buddies are back in school. Like, do you guys go through times where you're just like thinking about back home, getting homesick, obviously, and just being like, man, what are my buddies doing right now? And what am I like? I have no, you don't really have any friends yet. You got yeah. some teammates, you know, but you go to high school, you're kind of, you went from the king of the, yeah, king high, of the school high to like, school is weird for sure. Like no one, nobody and being like yeah. outside looking in type thing, you know, was it tough? Like those first couple of weeks being in Barry and being in Owen Sound, you're just like homesick a bit, miss your parents, obviously miss your brother, miss, you know, was it, was that, was that a bit of a I tough I didn't miss grind? my brother. Well, no, maybe not, but. But, uh, yeah, cause I was at, uh, Blythe and it was a private school right. and I had all the, all the boys playing hockey every yeah. morning. And then I went to a public high school and I was, uh, That's a huge, a huge change. Yeah. yeah. Just meeting all the new people. They, I don't know. You're pretty shy to talk to them, yeah. but, um, just having all the new teachers and new, new classmates was pretty weird, but uh, yeah. lucky enough, he had a couple, of, I had one teammate for each class that I took. So that helps for yeah. sure. Yeah. So yeah, it's basically you two against everyone else, <laughs> Yeah. but in, in Owen Sound, everyone knows the Owen Sound attack players. So. Right. And some hate you and some like you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Most, I don't know. The guys in the past have given us a bad rep, but. Uh, Was it pretty good the last couple of years? Yeah. I think yeah. Um, once the kids got to know us, they actually liked us. But if they had an idea that we were all mean and. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Jerks, yeah. Jocks. Yeah. But it's true though. Like a lot of times in small towns, I know it's happened a lot of places where a bunch of the OHL guys go to high school and, you know, we're. Come hockey from guys bigger and little places and yeah, a little yeah. cocky, a little arrogant, a little like oh, this place sucks. And then yeah. it turns the whole school against them basically. And now it All the sucks for the other guys are, coming yeah. in. Right. Yeah. And yeah, for sure. What was it like in Barry? Um, like it was, it was pretty weird at first, like waking up in different bed and, um, going like you, you just wake up and you think you're at home and <laughs> you walked out It's a whole different family. And, um, yeah. but my billets were great and I got really close with them over the years and, uh, like I'm just, I'm looking forward to going back. So, yeah. um, but yeah, like it's definitely weird, like different school, new teammates. I was lucky. I knew a couple of guys on the team going into it. And, um, but like, again, like other guys kind of, um, just like we're at school. And, um, so they, when I was going to school there, uh, there was, we had one or two guys in the class and sometimes I wouldn't even have a teammate in the class. So it was, uh, it was pretty hard just like kind of going in in the first couple of weeks and just kind of sitting alone and yeah. being that weird kid in the corner totally. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, like once, like once guys like get to know you, like I met guys through, um, through my, uh, billet brother, like he was my same age. And oh, cool. so I met, met a couple of his friends and like, it just kind of like, spirals out and you get to know a couple of kids around the school. And I think once they get to know you, they kind of get a different idea of yeah. uh, like what the hockey guys are like and, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I remember my first year junior. So I went, I went, moved from Sudbury, Ontario. It was full French, like total heck like, in Toronto standards. Moved to Toronto and Markham, just north of Toronto. So I went from like school of three, 400 people to like 1200. It was crazy uniforms, the whole nine. My first day there, I went like same thing as you guys went through. Like didn't know anybody, knew a couple guys on the team, but didn't have classes with them, whatever. Go to lunch, go to eat lunch. And like, I don't know if you guys remember your first time going to like the cafeteria at a new school. You're like, we don't even work. We didn't have you. a cafeteria. We just had two periods of lunch because we had a we had a big school. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, a little bit different. We have this calf or whatever. So I go to sit down. I literally know nobody. So I'm sitting at a long table. Nobody else is sitting there. Just sit down, backpack, eat my lunch by myself. And I don't think anybody else sat at this table just because they didn't know who I was or whatever. So yeah. I literally sat for most of the lunch by myself eating. And I was in my head, like you just I'm such a loser. Man. This is like, I'm hit, like, am I doing the right thing right now? Should I move back to Sudbury? Like you go through those thoughts. Right? Yeah. It's like, holy. And then like you guys said, it got better. I got to know some kids yeah. in my class and then you got to start eating lunch with them and it was better, but you're going through a whole, you're kind of resetting. You go from yeah. being like the king of the castle, you know, that's 16, and then, 15. And then 
you're at the bottom of the barrel as far as socially, right? Yeah. You're still playing on a good team and all that stuff. But so yeah, it's, it's definitely the pressure of just hockey in general. For like, sure. Having to do both. It's pretty tough. Yeah. For, oh, for a 16 year old. Definitely. Anyways, yeah. yeah. And I know everyone's like, Oh, you play in the O, you got drafted first overall, like suck it up, but you're still a kid. Yeah. You know, take away the draft and the hockey. You're just a 15 year old boy. Like you're going through the same stuff that any other 15 year old boy is going through. Just the mm -hmm. fact that you play hockey doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. So going to school and being kind of, you know, bad word maybe, but a loser, you are, you're, you, nobody knows you. Yeah. You don't know anybody. You, you're, you're, you're insecure. You're like, holy smokes, what am I doing? Like I went through it and I, I mean, you guys did too. And so many kids go through that where they think that they're the only one going through it. And almost everyone's gone through yeah. that, right? That being the, being, you know, the low man on the totem pole or the low person in that, in that, in that group of people. Right. Um, but I think, you know, you mentioned earlier, but that mental toughness, like those kind of situations I think are what help everybody, but you know, guys like you or me or whoever to, to get stronger. And, and next time that situation comes up on a new team, which, you know, let's say you, you're going to go play pro this year. It's a little bit easier. It gets a little bit easier, a little bit easier to get in those new situations and, and around those new people. Right. Um, now fast forwarding kind of again, but you, now you're, you know, obviously had a good run this year, won a championship. What was it like? I talked to Raddy a little bit about this as well. Like getting traded, first of all, did you know you were going to get traded? Do you think that Owen Sound was maybe going to unload a little bit and try to like get some assets and trade for, you know, trade some of their bigger guys away? Did you have a feeling yeah. that was going to happen? Well, at the end of the, or, sorry, at the start of the year, uh, we had like a really good core of guys that have been, ex were experienced in playoffs and um, have been together for the, all like the four years I was in Owen Sound. And um, we thought we could uh, get like a couple pieces and be like a good contender. Um, but then at the, we didn't have like the, we were basically playing every game as to try to show our GM that we we're a good team and <laughs> to get guys, but um, yeah. it kind of didn't end up, end up that way. Uh, we, had a, we had a ton of young guys uh, with just the older core. So, yeah. um, so like once uh, Kevin Hancock got traded to London, we we're like, okay, like this is probably just gonna, everyone's going to get it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No one, no one really knew who was going to get traded. And then, um, the GM started talking to me like about destinations and, uh, there's a few teams that were trying to trade for me. And then he told me Guelph wasn't even in the picture that when I spoke to him and then all of a sudden the day before the deadline, uh, he's like, yeah, you, we have a trade for to Guelph. And I was like, Oh really? No way. <laughs> so then it was, uh, me, Dersey and Roberts were all in the same trade. And then we all called Raddy and he was like sleeping. <laughs> and uh, we're, I was like, yo, we're all coming to Guelph. And he's like, what? No way. And we were supposed to play in London that night, but uh, the trade had, wasn't processed throughout the whole, yeah. uh, each player. So um, we're all just uh, waiting for the trade to be done and then uh, cool. packed it up. We're, you must've been pretty pumped, right? Because Guelph had a good team, obviously. And like adding three pieces like you guys had mm -hmm. to that. Yeah, because Marcus Phillips from Owen Sound also got traded right before us. So we were playing uh, with what well, he was just traded while we were still playing. Okay. And then they also got Ant Whistle, uh, who was on World Juniors. Uh, just they already had a strong team. And, they, and then we just picked up three World That's Junior crazy. players. Yeah. Jersey, who's a second round pick. And then Roberts is just a guy that hits everything. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. a great teammate. Which is an unreal playoff yeah. guy, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 So we're when when we go there we're like okay we're winning this <laughs> yeah so uh, and what was it like winning actually winning the championship and you guys did it like didn't do it easily you guys took the hardest road possible in almost every series by yeah. <laughs> going down and coming back and winning uh but what was it like when you finally kind of go through that the battle of playoffs number one going through a lot of long series where you're going six seven games and most of them so playing a lot of games um what was it like kind of getting to that last game and find that final final buzzer goes and family mm -hmm. friends are in, in the stands and kind of what was that what was that like because that's the biggest yeah, thing that you've won yeah. so far it was a mental mental grind for sure just being down in series almost going home in the second round yeah um but just to lift the trophy was unbelievable um just the hard all the hard work that every guy put in um everything that we went through as a team since i got to guelph was uh just all capped off with that and it was just such a good feeling to finally lift the trophy of yeah. what we've been working for, for my four years in the OHL. And, um, it was just a experience that I'll never forget. I had a bunch of family and friends there. Ryan, Ryan showed up. Nice, nice guy. I was wearing a Ratcliffe shirt. <laughs> I saw, oh, you know what? I saw that picture <laughs> actually. The Suzuki shirts were sold out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you no, go. There you, go. <laughs> no, you, no, you not wearing your brother's shirt. No, no. no. 
But it's embarrassing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just having all the family and friends there was uh, really yeah, awesome. Yeah, cool. Yeah, and to do it in Guelph, and they, Guelph hasn't won a championship at their home rink, so that was cool. That was the first time. Uh, That's really cool. The fans were just yeah. unbelievable throughout the whole. And playoffs. what was it like to drink out of the actual cup? It didn't taste too good. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of getting all over our dressing room and everybody's shirts, but yeah, uh, still pretty cool though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when you see, like, you know, we've grown up seeing this on TV, right? You see those big, those famous pictures of you know, teams celebrating the locker room and stuff like that. And then when you get a chance to do it, even on a smaller scale, you know, in the OHL, it's yeah, it's still, still pretty cool, cool man. Yeah. yeah, especially the guys you went to war with for the you know, through the playoffs and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, it's awesome. That's oh, great. And then I know for you guys, right, a little bit different outcome this season as far as going to the playoffs and yeah. stuff, but maybe a little bit more of a rebuild for Barry, but for you, you mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, this is your NHL draft year. Obviously you want to go, you know, you want to go as high as you can again, just like you did in the OHL, but as this is going on and you're not, you know, the team's not doing great. You know, you have some good players, obviously maybe yeah. some players, but it's not, you don't have a top six line, you know, two lines that are just lighting the league up right now. So for you, how is that whole process to go through that season? Kind of keeping in mind that you want to still play well, play the right way. You know, you're, you're a point guy. You're a guy who's yeah. got to show skill. And sometimes it's hard when you're, you know, maybe the team's not playing well or the other team's just better. So how do you go through that whole process of like keeping focus with it and, and obviously trying to put up numbers at the same yeah, time? Yeah, well, I think at the start of the year, like um, I was playing with Lucas Chioto, if you know who that mm -hmm. is. I'm not sure if you do, but. He can um, play. Yeah, he's, he's a really good yeah. player. And um, he's been like a top like point guy in, in the league the last couple of years. So uh, he's, was, uh, he's not, he's not big though, right? No, he's a little, little yeah. small guy, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he's, really he's a good shifty. player. Yeah he's, yeah, he's real crafty. Yeah, he's had like 80 points the last two years. So yeah. uh, I was playing with him at the start of the year, and um, I was playing with Matei Pakar too, and he's drafted to um, Buffalo, uh, third-round pick. Yeah. And um, so we had a real good line at the start of the year, and I kind of like got to, got off to a really hard, hot start. and um, I was, I was leading like, the league in points. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was leading the league for a bit. Nice. And, yeah. You take a couple of screenshots of that? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, right. Come on. It's okay if you did. Don't worry about it. Okay. No, but yeah, like I had I had I had good players to play with this yeah. start of the year. And um I mean like our line was clicking and um uh, maybe it was a little bit easier. I mean, we played Owen Sound and Nick Nick was still in uh oh, right. in Vegas or Montreal. Yeah. I don't know where he was, but um he was he was down there, so the games were a little bit easier. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I think for me it was just that was big for me to start off like that and then um Right around the deadline, we started kind of shipping guys out one by one, and it was pretty tough just to kind of see the team take a different direction. For sure, but um, like at the same time, it gave me a lot of a lot more opportunity, like um, like top line minutes, like power play all the time, and yeah, um, penalty kill, like pretty much every situation I was able to play and got assistant captain, which is big for me. And it's great, yeah. Um, I think just kind of give me more responsibility, and um, I think once. It was a tough, about a tough month and a half. Like I was going through, like had a couple points and like yeah. too many games, and uh, I was pretty disappointed in how I was playing. And um, I eventually like just kind of was like enough. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm just gonna come out and just like dominate. And um, I just kind of turned it around a bit, and we started beating some top teams like London, yeah, um, Ottawa, Niagara, Niagara, a couple times. That's and, great, yeah, yeah. So um, I think once we realized like. We were, we were a young team. We were the youngest team in the league, and uh, we realized we could hang with, like, those top top dogs. So um, I think we just – once we realized that, we came out with more energy every night, and we started, yeah. we started playing a lot better, but um, just didn't get the outcomes we wanted all the time. And, uh, they just kind of added up. It's one of those things, though, sometimes, they, you know, you're – it's it's the situation. It's not you, right? It's just yeah. – you know, you get hot start of the year. You have an unreal line. You're like, "Hey, this is it, man. We're gonna, you yeah, know, we're gonna finish like, oh, one, yeah, two, three in the point guy. It's gonna be amazing." <laughs> yeah, but then things happen. Things change. It's not your fault. You have no, you have no say no in control, that. Control, yeah. And then, you know, how do you make that crap? You know, maybe a worse situation better. And like you said, you kind of change your mentality and be like, "Hey, I gotta, no matter who I play with, what's going on, I gotta be the best. I gotta dominate. I gotta create. I gotta make guys around me better." And you see guys like Sidney Crosby do this all the time, right? He gets. He gets the call ups on his line sometimes, and all of a sudden, this guy's got 20 goals. Yeah. Well, that guy was good, but I mean, he probably got some help there, right? So, having guys like that help other guys get better, I think is huge. And a lot of times yeah. with young kids, you hear this, and you guys probably went through it as well, where, you know, hey, how'd you play? I didn't play very well. My wingers suck tonight, or, you know, whatever. But 
how did you play? Like, did you do what you needed yeah. to do to make things better? Yeah, I gave him the puck three times. He didn't bury, but at the end of the day, I got them the puck three times, which is good. Like, and I think looking at the looking at it the, the other way was what what can I do to be better? What can I do to help this team get better? Rather than poor me, my 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 two good wingers are yeah. just got shipped off and now I can't get yeah. points, right? Um, because there's a lot of that in hockey, I think, where it's easy to point the finger and kind of blame other people where sometimes you gotta look in the mirror and be like, ah, oh, maybe I can do something a little yeah. bit better here and mm. kind of work on what I need to work on, right? Um <laughs> Now you, you know, you went through the draft, the NHL draft now kind of moving forward and um, obviously pretty exciting, pretty, pretty cool. I'm sure it was cool for you to kind of see, you know, your brother getting kind of realizing a goal. I'm sure that you've had your whole life. Like we all have to play in the NHL. Uh, what was that day like for you? Was it kind of, was it nerve wracking kind of sitting there and just kind yeah. of sweating through your shirt and waiting to see what's <laughs> happening and stuff? Yeah. Well, for the shirt, I was going to wear a, like a blue, but then Ryan said I was going to be sweating through it. So then I went with a white, so. Uh, it was good a good call. call. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. But uh Style just guy. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> Throughout the day, uh the draft was like at eight or like uh, I don't know, seven thirty started. So like it's just a long, long wait. Day. Yeah. Me and Ryan were just walking down downtown Chicago for like three hours just trying to kill time, yeah. not think about it. But yeah, it's a it's a long process. Um just waiting each pick. Uh, yeah. it takes a long time, but uh, I was lucky enough to go decently early and didn't have to wait that long. So it was just uh, pretty stressful. Uh, I think I had a kind of range that I thought I, I could go in and but you don't really know for sure. Right. And it it could happen, depends. Right? Yeah, yeah. It depends how everything falls throughout before you. And um, I had a good feeling about uh, Vegas and Tampa Bay. Uh, so th those teams were in like the same range. So, um, I didn't really know what was going to happen, but, uh, just trying to stay as calm as I could. Oh, that's cool. And what was it like for you, Ryan, going through that kind of seeing your brother, you know, going yeah. through that process. And I mean, obviously you saw it all year and you kind of knew what was going on, but and actually being at the draft, was it, was it was a little bit surreal. It was a pretty cool just to kind of, yeah, like I was, I was just, I was just drafted into the OHL and I thought that was pretty cool. And then Nick was ready for his NHL draft. <laughs> you realize, like, like sitting at a computer, right, that's, just against. One, that's just one step. So, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I was nervous for him and I felt like I was getting drafted and uh, I was, I was watching the teams like pick other guys and I was like, Oh, Nick's better than that guy. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. Nick would never say that, but, um, but yeah, so I was like, I was just happy when he got drafted to Vegas. I was like, like, wow, that's pretty cool. Like, yeah. I guess like new franchise. For sure. Um, I thought it was a, it was, it was a fun day, like just getting to go up in the VIP box in Vegas and get some snacks up there because <laughs> I was pretty hungry just <laughs> sitting there. And, um, yeah, we were waiting about two hours for this guy to come up and he was doing all his media stuff. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. We watched yeah. the rest of the first round and, uh, saw, saw a couple guys like, uh, Robbie Thomas get drafted yeah. and a couple guys I knew. So that's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. The, the back of the draft isn't as fun as that. No, just getting picked. <laughs> yeah, because you got a bunch of stuff to do after, right? Yeah. Like pictures and media and all bunch sorts of, of pictures, stuff. Yeah, tons of autographs. Yeah, yeah. Now, interviews. Uh, Your fast, hand is probably shaking when you're doing that. Yeah, yeah especially the first couple, right? You're probably pretty like uh, nervous. Yeah, and, <laughs> pretty yeah. juiced up. Gets yeah. you right into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and then what was it like? I, I know you're not, you weren't playing there at the time, obviously, but then getting traded, like you, you know, your rights getting traded from Vegas to Montreal. Was it? One of those things where, you know, what goes through kind of your head on that? Are you kind of excited about it? Or are you like, and I was really nervous uh, yeah. just because I've done the, I did the two development camps with Vegas, a rookie camp, main camp. And then I was just at rookie camp with them. And I just uh, had a ton of good connections with all the players that I was drafted with. And uh, I felt good with it. Well, Ryan McGill was my coach in Owen Sound and he was in Vegas. So right. I was really comfortable with him and, just all the all the guys around the team and all the pro pro guys that I got to meet, and uh, then it was just out of the blue that um, the my player development guy uh, came in and was like, uh, "George McPhee wants to talk to you." I was like, "Oh, that's probably not <laughs> not too good." He doesn't really talk to guys during yeah, totally. camp. I was yeah. like, "I was either I've either either been playing really bad and he wants to get me going, or I, I'm going somewhere." Something, yeah, I had no idea what team. Or you're signing a deal. <laughs> uh but uh before a bunch of us were talking like because carlson was going to get traded to vegas and it was going to be like me glass or branch from 
or Hag even. Right. So there's like four of us that could be going to yeah. Ottawa that was rumored. Right. And then all of a sudden he's like, uh, we got to trade with Montreal. And he's like, it wasn't uh, Montreal really, really wanted you in this deal. And uh, it's they just made a trade for the NHL team because I wasn't going to play in the yeah. NHL that year. Yeah. And I got Patch Reddy, who was a great player. For, for sure, yeah. So I, I was pretty nervous and uh, I didn't know too many guys in Montreal, but I, I knew a couple. So I just uh, talked to them about it and it made me more comfortable. And once I got down there, it was a uh, pretty smooth transition. That's cool. Got to buy him a... English to French dictionary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of, a lot of Google translate. He's eh? going to out for dinner. He's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had a couple of guys that actually learned French throughout uh, school. So it was nice to have those yeah, guys order yeah, for everybody. Definitely need some help. Cause some yeah. of the areas are like Montreal, especially is very English, but there are some pockets is like uh, Quebec, obviously, but yeah. Where the practice facility French. is, is mostly French. Okay. Like, there's not a lot of people who speak English around there, but Montreal right. is like, pretty English. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's not too, too bad for sure. And then for you going in, like you're going to be coming up here in, in next weekend, actually, you're going to be going down for your NHL draft. And um, obviously, you know, there's, you know, some good hype on you and, you know, you're fitting in that kind of potentially first round and, you know, pretty exciting, right? And then again, you've gone through it and you've seen buddies of yours that were maybe supposed to be first rounders drop and, you know, and, and fall off and things change with draft lists and stuff like that. So um, what's your mindset going into this? Is it kind of, kind of excited? And I mean, at the end of the day, pretty good chance you're going to get drafted throughout those two days. Right. So, yeah. I mean, for you, it's like, I, I probably should hopefully get drafted, but for, you know, is, are, are you kind of excited about it? Are you nervous about it? Are you kind of, I think like right now I'm not too worried about it, but yeah. um, I think closer to the date, I'll get a little jittery and yeah. nervous, but yeah, right now I'm not, not too worried. Not but, too bad. Um, I think for sure, like the next couple of days are closer to that, the Friday there. Um, I'll definitely get a little more anxious and yeah. Um, those days will be long for sure. Just kind of waiting for draft day. And, um, but yeah, I'm uh, just super excited. Just kind of dip my toes in the NHL and um, just kind of get going with them. For sure. Then it's always good to get like some free swag when you go to Alden <laughs> camp too, right? So yeah. it's great. <laughs> yeah. Free stuff's good. Yeah. It's always good. It's always good. Um, for you, Nick, like growing up with the younger brother, obviously kind of going through everything that you're going through a couple of years later. So you're kind of paved a bit of a way and, you know, kind of, was there any advice that, that, that you've ever shared with them and could be just off the cuff or anything like that, but like, Hey man, keep your head up for this or Hey, watch out for this. Is there anything that you kind of like that you notice you're like, man, if he can dodge a bullet here, I'm going to let him, you know, I'll throw it to him. Sometimes you don't just mm -hmm. let him hit the bullet. Cause that's always <laughs> fun too. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I think uh, just throughout this year, we, talked more about uh, the whole process of uh, what the interviews are like. Uh, he just went through the combine and I thought the combine was really hard. Just uh, all the interviews with the yeah. different teams and yeah. uh, kind of what to look out for. I told him not to get rattled and they kind of want to see you get uh, rattled if they're giving you hard questions. And I think he did a great job of that. And uh, some, they try to grill you, but uh, if you're just relaxed and uh, just give them a solid answer, they, they really like to see that. And, um, I think throughout the comma and the interview process is the hardest part, not even the testing. Right. Just, uh, yeah. yeah having, no, having, for sure. Having many interviews in a day uh, could be back to back to back. So yeah. it's probably even the most physically demanding because I mean, you're there sometimes for like six, seven hours going through interviews. Yeah. Right? You're like, just waiting around yeah. and just for your interview time. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a grind to do all the, most of the same questions. Yeah. Um, it's a long day for them too. So you don't know how they're going to react to you or if, sure. they're, if they're yeah. tired from doing interviews yeah, throughout the whole point. day. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, for yeah, sure. The hardest ones were always the first ones in the morning. Yeah. Sure. Cause they got all their energy back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Right. Yeah. They're, they're, they're a little wittier, a little yeah. more sarcastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're just getting peppered in those yeah. early morning, yeah. early morning interviews. You're waking up rubbing <laughs> your eyes and just getting grilled. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, growing up with a brother and some buddies, I mean, you're, you're used to getting grilled, right? Yeah. Just maybe not by NHL executives. That's yeah. a little different for sure. For yeah. sure. You don't know if they're being, trying to be funny or they're being serious. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, if you guys had to look back, I'll, I'll go with you first here, Ryan, but if you had to look back, like I, where you're at now, kind of going through this process of, you know, playing in the O, um, if you have to look back at yourself at like 10, 11, 12, 13, let's say kind of minor hockey, 
Uh, is there anything that, that you would tell yourself then to just saying like, buddy, make sure you keep an eye on this or make sure you keep this dialed in. Could be mentally, physically eating, whatever, but are there certain things that looking back on a younger guy saying, Hey, if you keep this stuff a little bit tighter, or you're a little bit better at this, it's going to help when you get to that next level. Yeah. I think, um, like when in grade eight, when I started at, uh, the peak or mm -hmm. Blythe and I think just being more serious in the gym, like when you're a kid and like, it goes a long way for sure. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. And, uh, definitely eating more, like, uh, put on a little bit of weight, <laughs> but, um, yeah, like I think just kind of being in, like, I got a good opportunity to be able to work out every day and kind of get a head start on a lot of kids my age. And uh, I think, um, it did help me out a lot, like just being in the gym every day and being on the ice. And I think just kind of being more serious in those situations as a young kid is uh, really important. I think that's good advice because a lot of times parents will put kids in programs like a summer program or camps or whatever. Yeah. And I think a lot of times as kids, we all did it. I did it where you kind of take it for granted, right? You're yeah. like, Oh, it's cool. I'm going to camp seven days or 14 days or whole summer. Like, yeah, cool. But you know, yeah. taking advantage of that stuff, even yeah. the OHL, like for junior hockey, wherever you're playing, if you get extra ice or there's extra ice, go shoot pucks. Like take advantage of it. Go out and do that things where I think sometimes you're right. You look back and you're like, probably could have gone a little harder there yeah. sometimes and kind of maybe got a little bit more out of it. Right. So I think, I think that's, I think that's great. What about you, Nick? Is there anything that you kind of think of that, you know, if you could tell yourself at that age, like, Hey, you know, maybe, maybe eat less, maybe, eat, or whatever, whatever it is. <laughs> uh, for me, probably go to more skating classes. So <laughs> yeah. I, probably, I heard about my skating throughout my whole junior and NHL process. So yeah, they're not as nice and junior as they are yeah. in minor hockey. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> probably just uh become a better skater that would i that would i say to myself so yeah uh, but that, yeah i think ahead. uh also uh, i wish i kind of did more i, I wish i kind of did baseball or football or uh lacrosse he played lacrosse but i never did so i think if i would have played those sports uh, you can take everything from each sport and uh put it to whatever you like the most uh, i think that's great and i think the multi-sport like our big thing, I know with Mitch downstairs in the gym and, and myself on the ice, I love guys that are athletes because they're easier to move. They're easier to, you know, and, and they're, they, you know, for the most part, they skate well. They can pick things up really quickly. But I agree that I think, you know, playing other sports is so important. It gets your mind off hockey, which I think we all need to do sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, you pick up a different skill set. Like even lacrosse is great because yeah. a lot of contact, there's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of ball control and looking for passes, making plays, uh, which translates really well to hockey, I, right? I think... Like the guys that are like good athletes are also like good like sm like smart players like on the ice like for me and Nick like we both played soccer and were you a midfielder too yeah yeah like the center mids they control the whole game and pretty much everything runs off you and I'm um, just kind of I think that helps a lot with my on ice stuff like when you're playing midfield you're getting the ball turning looking make a play like yeah. take it out to each side and. Yeah, kind of being a center in hockey, you're kind of doing the same thing, and everything runs through you. So I think that kind of helps with our hockey sense. And totally, yeah, it makes sense for that, sure. Yeah. yeah, and like I mean, you're you got to kind of either see plays develop or create plays, right? Yeah. So you're, you're doing mm -hmm. one of the two, which is which you got to see it for sure. You got to see it happening before you yeah. do it. So and I mean, both of you guys have like really good hockey IQ. Obviously, you're both hockey smart, and on the ice, you see things that sometimes other players don't. And you guys have heard this your whole career for sure. But do you guys think like, obviously like you just touched on Ryan, like multi sports and playing other sports and seeing things develop and obviously increasing your, your hockey IQ, but there's a lot of dumb hockey players that played a lot of sports, right? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> was there anything else you guys think kind of helped with that? So for instance, you know, did your dad like watching hockey with you? Did you guys like watching hockey together? Did you guys like going to games or night London nights games or things like that? Or, cause I think a lot of times now, a lot of the kids don't watch a lot of hockey. Uh, and I think that's one way to help hockey IQ, especially at young ages, when you see plays develop and you can kind of say, oh, that guy should pass it there. And it, it happens or it doesn't happen. But there's certain hockey plays that should happen that don't. Um, did you guys spend time doing that, like watching games and stuff like that? Yeah, I don't remember when I wasn't watching games on Saturday nights or yeah. um, going to London Knights games was awesome just to have a, a ton of good players coming through London to get to watch them and our our dad would usually point out like a couple of players for us to just keep an eye on. Cool. Just having like Tavares and yeah, Kane yeah. and all these <laughs> yeah. star NHL players play in London was a huge opportunity for us to watch them. And um, just watching, my, our dad was a huge Leafs fan. So we saw a couple of good players on the Leafs when they weren't that good. But yeah. um, 
yeah, we found players that both of us like to watch and just YouTube highlights of uh, what they're doing. It's yeah, for huge sure. Too. Yeah. I think like also in like, I'd say like Bantam and um, like Midget, like Ben Wu's dad was always videotaping the games. And <laughs> yeah, you're right. able to go watch your shifts, which is yeah. great. So I think that helps a lot just watching your own game other than uh, just other players. And Definitely. Um, definitely like highlights aren't too great watching because you only see the best of the best. You don't see like their defensive stuff and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, like if you just watch a game and you keep your eye on one player, I think you can learn a lot more than just watching the game and just watching the puck the whole time. So that's a really good point, actually. And I, that's actually great <laughs> advice because I find, and I'll, I'll do this sometimes. Like I've got, I got, uh, an opportunity this playoff to watch McKinnon a lot just because I hadn't watched him much and I knew he was good obviously but highlights but not when I actually watched him play Calgary in the playoffs which meant I stayed up way past my bedtime lots of times but yeah. um but it, it was he was unreal but you watch and when I was kind of zooming on him and just watch him you see a lot of these little intricacies that wow so we just did that and stuff you wouldn't really pick up in the play but when you do micro in on one player I think it's great advice to like keen on the guy that you like that maybe yeah. is your size and plays like you a little bit like Goudreau maybe keying on him and watch how he plays and you'll pick up so much more on the little things he sees or how he makes plays or how he yeah, stick yeah. checks and things that, you know, you can kind of learn from that. I think a lot better than watching the whole big picture. Yeah, if you're just watching the puck, you're only seeing true. half the game. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah. No, that's really cool for sure. Listen, boys, I don't want to keep you guys long and I really appreciate you guys stopping by. Um, is there any, you guys got any kind of good, uh, good tilts in the last month or two between the two of you guys? Has there been any good, uh, maybe a shirt stolen, hat stolen, <laughs> shoes. Anything? Well, I think he he's wearing, wearing all your garb right now. Everything, everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. My <laughs> shoes, my shorts, and my shirt. Oh, nice. I've stolen a couple of his hats. I usually take his shirts. Yeah, he comes in my room every, every morning. morning. <laughs> he takes something to work out in. So basically, you guys. Just, I always forget to do my laundry, so I just go get some nice, fresh clothes from Nick. Nice, good, good guy, the way. Eh? Good guy. <laughs> I guess it was better when he wasn't home. Yeah, because then all the stuff's just sitting know. there, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so you guys sleep in separate rooms, but just share the same dresser. It's yeah. good, right? Yeah, it's good. And do your own laundry too. Mom's got you guys trained well that you do your own laundry. No. <laughs> I didn't think so. I do my own laundry. There you go. I only wash my hockey equipment. I just throw everything in there. Out of way. It always makes it a little, just clanking. All yeah. The time. <laughs> yeah. Throw my Especially the skates. In there. Right? Yeah, Especially the skates. It's tough yeah, coming skates home and not having a trainer to do your gitch no for you. No doubt. Hey, how nice it's that is. Just put nice. in the basket. Yeah, yeah. It gets done the next day. It's all yeah, good. Yeah. It's not good. Yeah. But. Yeah. You guys are spoiled, privileged little hockey guys. Yeah. You so come you back go. and you, your uh, equipment still smells from the last <laughs> skate. Yeah, it's probably still wet because yeah. you probably didn't take all of it out of your bag. Forgot a towel. You got to use yeah. a jersey or something. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> exactly. did that last skate. <laughs> nice. It's always you good. Use the little towels about yeah that big. Yeah, or the paper towels. Towel. Brutal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, boys. Thanks a lot, man. And uh, I, I'm gonna follow up with you, Rye, for sure. And, and and both you guys. I'd love to have you guys back on. But I'd like to follow up with you for sure after the draft and see how that whole thing goes and yeah. and have some fun with that, which would be good. So best of luck with that. Yeah, thank you. And uh, and for you, Nick. Best of luck at development camp with Montreal, and hopefully uh, you're a Canadian this year. Obviously, gonna be starting pro, which is great. So it'll be good one way or the other. You'll be playing pro, which is awesome. So yeah. you're gonna be getting a paycheck to play hockey. Sounds Make good. Sure you stay in I good get that too. Four seventy. <laughs> you know, awesome, you're not right? supposed to say that. Oh yeah, you got to keep that on the download. That's the OHL. Uh, OHL. You're not, not supposed to talk about that. What, no, yeah, I'm I just kidding. Receipts. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I'm just kidding. All right, boys. Have a good one. Talk to you soon. Thanks.